Hi, and welcome to the Element 7 Concrete Training Module regarding polyurethane top coats. A little overview of polyurethanes. Those are materials that cannot go over uncoated concrete. So we install them over pro chip, solid epoxy, and urethane mortar forms. Polyurethanes are 3 to 15 times as abrasion resistant than epoxy, and they tend to have a longer pot life and are at least somewhat moisture free. What that means is that this is going to be a lot easier than your solid color epoxy. But the coverage rate, how you budget that and how thick or thin you put that on, becomes more important. And we'll talk about that as we go through here. Now with everything here, safety comes first. You do not want to get sensitized to isocyanates. Those are one of the chemicals inside of these materials that if you breathe them, um, over time, you'll sort of become like allergic to it. When you're around it, you won't feel good. If you uh, wear a VOC mask every time you touch them or interact, or interact with them, you'll probably be fine for your entire career. But if you cowboy it thinking, oh, it doesn't bother me, oh, it doesn't bother me, eventually it's going to bother you. And so you don't want to get sensitized to that. Now, that mask is always your best friend. Um, usually you'll have the pink P100 uh, dust filters on there. Um, we love these masks because they're reusable and they seal up around the nose and mouth so much better than the ones that look like coffee filters. So on this one you're going to take the pink filters off so it looks like this and you're going to use the organic vapor cartridges uh, with or without the pre-filter. The pre-filter is just a, a little dust catcher that goes before that that you see when you first buy the mask. Um, what you're really after is just this cartridge on there. Now to be clear, you're, there's really not a lot to gain with this material with using the full face respirator. Those things are great if you're, I guess, making methamphetamines, according to Breaking Bad, they always seem to have those respirators on. Or um, they're really good for CSS because xylene does get in your eyes, and so you, you don't want that being absorbed into your body through your eyes. I like using these full face respirators with that P100 dust filter um, when I'm saw cutting concrete because it keeps the, the chunks out of my eyes completely and it keeps the dust out of my lungs, so that's great. But this is not what you need for this operation. The half mask with the VOC respirators are really going to be the, the, the greatest thing. And like I said, this one's important because it'll get you sick over time, or, or allergic rather, to that material over time, so don't be that guy. Uh, regarding clothing, I think long pants are something that you wear when you go to work. Uh, long sleeves are a really good idea. Um, gloves with this material are, are non-negotiable. When we're working with coatings, we want to wear long sleeves, pants, and gloves. Um, I wear that every day at work almost. I know it's hot out, but you don't see ranchers in shorts and tank tops. And those guys are the epitome of pragmatism, right? But keeping things, including the blazing sun, off your arms and legs is a great way to stay comfortable and healthy. Now back to the job site, the first thing that you're going to do to get everything put in place and ready to go is you're probably going to want to sand the floor with a 100 grit sanding screen. If the floor looks perfect and it's been less than 24 hours, you can skip this, but generally that's part of your reason clause, part of your putting it in place. You follow that with isopropyl alcohol. You must use the 99% pure isopropyl alcohol. You don't want to use cheap acetone or xylene or cheap alcohol as it'll uh, leave behind impurities that may cause the coating to fish eye. Really important to use something clean. Here. And then kind of back to that first point that we made about moisture cured things. On this one it's really important to mark off your milestones. That is, know how far that material needs to go for each kit. Now we'll just do a little math together. Uh, poly 100, which is one of these polyurethanes, uh, goes down at 275 to 350 square feet per gallon. Now it comes in a gallon and a half kit, and so if you multiply that by 1.5, it'll be 480 roughly square feet per kit. So um, if you're going to do a, if you're going to split it up, you, you want to show like, okay, you roll to here, you roll to here, or we're all rolling together and we have to get to this line. Regardless, you have to put lines on the wall or on the floor that are milestones, things that you need to hit with that material so that you, you nail it as far as the coverage. This is a quality thing. If you put it on too thin, it's going to look bad. If you put it on too thick, it will not perform correctly. So you have to figure out how far down the room each quart or each kit will go and mark it on the wall. 
there is a training module called Calculating Area and Budgeting Material that is uh, the place to find that. So um, get all your tools ready to go. Of course, in the morning, you're always going to see your project worksheet for a list. You're going to think through it yourself. You're going to spend 15 minutes on the way to the job talking through the plan with your team. And you're going to set up a mixing station with everything that you'll need before you mix the material so you're good to go. Now you're always going to want to mix only the amount of material that can be used in a two hour period at normal temperatures. Higher temperatures or the addition of accelerator will reduce that time. Um, we don't generally add accelerator to this, but we do have higher temperatures in Texas for sure. Um, they say that every 15 degrees tends to cut it in half or, or double it depending on which way you're going. So what that means is if it's 92 degrees instead of two hours, you have one hour. If it's 107, like it was today, you might have as little as half an hour to put that stuff down. Now that's still easier than the epoxy, but in hot weather, if you have a smaller, inexperienced team, you may consider mixing smaller batches. If you're using the pigmented system, you're going to want to pre-mix the part A with the pigment before adding the part B. Like a lot of things that we do, it is two parts A to one part B, and you want to mix for two full minutes using a slow speed drill, scraping the bottom and sides of the mixing container. Avoid contamination with moisture. Because this is moisture cured, if you have just a little bit of water that gets in there, it can cause it to turn white and foam and just generally do bad things. That's about all the technical information that I can give you. Now, you gotta get things set up, get some coaching from a certified art center training coordinator here, and learn how to really do this well on the floor where it counts. Thanks for watching.